Outlast is a survival horror game in which you take on the role of reporter Miles Upshore as he investigates the Mount Massive Asylum. Right from the beginning, you will find out that things aren't quite right in the facility. The game mostly consists of jump scares, but also involves chase sequences. An interesting feature of Outlast is its use of the camera. Instead of being given a flashlight or a lantern of some sort, your camera will function as your light source by taking advantage of its night vision feature. I felt this was pretty cool, and I haven't seen it done before. Towards the end of the game, you drop your camera and must retrieve it before you can continue. Though, when you get it back, you will find the lens cracked, which only served as an annoyance, despite the realism they were going for. Thankfully, this occurs during the final stretch. The environments within the game were well crafted, and they really helped to provide immersion throughout the experience. What was also nice was being able to see Miles grabbing the corner with his hand. Though, despite this, I couldn't remain immersed for long, mostly due to on-screen prompts letting me know which doors I can and cannot open before I even attempt to do so. Why not just let me explore? The same goes for when the camera battery was low. Whenever that happened to be the case, the game would inform me to press the R key to refill it. I don't need to be told this every time it occurs. And speaking of the camera batteries, I didn't find much of a point to them, really. There was never a point in the game where I found myself low on batteries, and by the end I was just about maxed out on them. Back to gameplay. In Outlast, you don't have any way to fend off your enemies, which I enjoyed. Instead of fighting, you would be forced to run and hide. You were able to hide yourself under beds and inside lockers, as well as behind various objects found within the asylum. The best way to describe enemy encounters is to call it a game of cat and mouse. You must outrun the hostiles and hide from them until it is safe to progress. It was quite fun towards the start of the game, but it certainly did get a bit old by the end. Towards the halfway point, enemy encounters were less fear factors and more just general nuisances. On top of the cat and mouse encounters, there were also times in which you would not get the opportunity to hide and instead are forced to run for your life. During these sections, it felt very parkour-inspired. You must vault over objects and make long leaps to escape. Not sure how I feel about the AI. Sometimes they seem stupid as all hell, only checking a single locker when there are just two in the room. Why not just check both? They also don't seem to notice any noise that you make, and will only begin to chase you after seeing you. However, other times, they find me crouched in a tunnel and pull me out before I get the chance to react. Lastly, regarding the AI, I found it very difficult to die simply because you can have them hit you, if you manage to get caught, then simply push them out of the way to advance past them. Early on, you will learn of a smoke-like creature that inhabits the asylum. You'll catch a few glimpses of him here and there, until the end where we see him up close. It was also later revealed towards the end that his name is Billy. Yep. Billy. Finally, I wish there were more complex puzzles within the game, but really all they have you do is collect keys and flip switches. By the end of the game, you get really tired of turning valves to progress. And that's really the big issue I had with the game. It just gets boring about halfway through. I mean, it's by no means a bad game, but it really loses its charm too early. The story wasn't captivating, and the gameplay was just too linear. I could still safely recommend Outlast, but to be honest, don't expect too much from it. Who names a monster Billy?